passing LinkedIn Excel assessment test is an excellent way to demonstrate your knowledge of the application. If you successfully answer 15 questions, you will be able to add Excel badge to your list of skills on LinkedIn. Hi there, this is Vadim Mikhalenka, and in this video, I'll share with you how to pass an employment assessment test. In this video, I will share with you sample questions we see on the test. I will have some questions for you to try and I'll show you tips, tricks, and hacks on how to get ready and pass the test. I will also share with you some additional test resources that might benefit you and might help you to get ready for the test quickly. In this video, you will have everything you need to pass LinkedIn Excel assessment test. I'll share with you sample questions. I will have questions for you to try and answer. I'll show you tips, tricks, and hacks on how to get ready and pass the test. And at the end of the video, I will take actual LinkedIn Excel test live to make sure you feel comfortable taking the test yourself. Let me tell you a little bit about myself. My name is Vadim Mikhalenka and I have MBA and master's degree in computer science. I have been helping people for more than 25 years to get hired and find jobs. I have founded howtoanalyzedata.net website with only intent to help people get employment. This site helped a lot of people and I'm pretty sure it will help you as well. And now let's go ahead and jump right to the questions. Here is the tricky question to test your knowledge of Excel keyboard shortcuts, which is very frequently used as part of Excel assessment test. Which keyboard shortcut would you use to enter a current date in a cell? And you have four choices, Alt plus D, Control plus semicolon, Control plus seven, and control plus D. Which one would you choose? Which one do you think is the right answer? To insert current date into Excel sheet, you need to put your cursor on the cell and then press control and semicolon. This combination inserts current date into the cell. Keep in mind that the value that we've inserted remains static. And if I open the same worksheet tomorrow, the date is going to be yesterday's date because Microsoft Excel shows the date at the time when it was inserted. So the correct answer to this question is choice B, control plus semicolon. Hopefully you've got it right. Let's look at the question to test your knowledge of Excel data types and their formatting options. Which of the following will be displayed when you enter 0.5 in a cell that is formatted as a percent? And then you have four choices, 5%, 50%, 0.05%, and 0.5%. Which one would you choose? When you have a value in a cell and then convert this value into percentage, Excel is treating the value as part of the whole. For example, 0.5 is 50% of one, which is the half of one, which represents 50%. So when you convert this value into percentage, by clicking and selecting the percentage data type, it will show that the value is 50%. So the correct choice here is choice B, 50%. Keep in mind that to convert the values, you can use a lot of different options, including keyboard shortcut, control, shift, and then percentage. Hopefully you've got this question correctly. And here is the question for you to try. What criteria will be applied to the data shown below when you apply the criteria begins with equal question mark eight, see the image, in the custom auto filter dialog box for column A? And you have four choices to choose from. Second character in the cell is eight. Choice B, eight appears more than once in the cell. Choice C, the cell contains eight characters. Choice D, the number eight only appears once in a cell. Do you think you know the answer? Please make sure to post in the comment section of this video so I can give you the grade. Here is the typical question which tests your knowledge of Excel ribbon commands. Which Excel ribbon commands you can use to achieve same results? When you select cell A1, hover the pointer over the cell border and drag the cell to a new location. You are presented with the screen and in cell 1 there is a text value of name and there are four choices, cut and format, copy as picture, cut and paste, copy and paste. Which one would you choose? You can drag the value in Excel cell by selecting the cell and changing the cursor to the arrows. And then when you drag this, it will move the value along with this. And moving the value is an equivalent of cut and paste command. You can use cut and paste 
or you can use keyboard shortcuts for cut and paste. Let me undo this real quick and we will use undo functionality on the quick bar. And then to use cut and paste format, we can do cut here right on the ribbon and then select the new location for the cell and then we can click paste. Or we can use keyboard shortcuts after I undo it again. And for keyboard shortcuts, I'll press Ctrl X and then move the cursor to a new location and then press Ctrl V. So the correct answer here is C, cut and paste. Dragging the value of the cell is very similar to cut and paste functionality available in Microsoft Excel. In keyboard shortcuts for this, for cut it's Ctrl X and for paste it's Ctrl V. Keyboard shortcut questions very frequently presented as part of Excel assessment test. Let's look at one of those questions. Which keyboard shortcut would you use to wrap the text and start a new line when inside the cell? And then there are four choices presented with the different keyboard shortcuts. Alt plus Enter, Control plus Enter, Alt plus N, and Alt plus W. Which one would you choose? When you are inside the cell and you need to continue the text on the new line, you use Alt Enter shortcut. When I press Alt Enter, you see that the first name that follows the last name started with the new line. So the correct answer to this question is choice A, Alt plus Enter. Very similar functionality can be accomplished using the wrap text feature of Microsoft Excel. Please make sure to check out available downloads in the description section of this video. All links to the downloads are available in the description of this video. Please make sure to consider ebooks and practice files and also consider premium resources that helped other people to get prepared faster. Let's look at the question which Excel formula would increment month to the next and allow display February 20 in the cell A3. Here in the screenshot, we have January-20 in the cell A2. And there are four formulas presented as choices. In choice A, we have A2 plus 1, which makes logical sense. In the choice B, we have more complicated formula using date function. In the choice C, we have month A2 plus 1. And in the choice D, we have date A2 plus 1. So which one would you choose? Which one do you think is the right answer? And as you might have figured out by now, the right choice is choice B. We have the complex formula because date in Excel is very complex. You can increment the year by one, month by one, or date by one. And in our case, we're only incrementing month by one. So once we type the formula, we see that the right value shows up here, which would be February 2020. We just need to change the format here. And to change the format, we can use Format Painter. We just need to highlight the current format that we are looking at and apply it to the cell and expand it a little bit so it fits. So the correct answer is B, with this complex date formula where only month is being incremented by one. All other choices are designed to trick you. Here is the variation of this question, which provides you with the different choices. To create new sheet in Excel, you use Control T keyboard shortcut. Click File, New Sheet, click New Icon on the Quick Access Toolbar, or right mouse click on Existing Sheet and select Insert. Let's use Exclusion to answer this question correctly. Exclusions is one of the methods where you exclude possible choices to come up with the right answer. Control T Keyboard Shortcut is used to create new tables, not new sheets. File, New Sheet option doesn't exist in Excel menu. New icon in a quick access toolbar create new workbook, not a new sheet. So through the method of exclusion, we came to choice D, which is the right mouse click on existing sheet and select insert. To create new sheet in Excel, you right mouse click on the sheet one, click insert and select worksheet. And that added a new worksheet into Excel spreadsheet. So the right choice here is choice D, right mouse click on existing sheet and select insert. Other choices are designed to trick you to believe that you might be the right answer, but they're not the valid option in Excel or incorrect for this particular question. One of the things you can ask test provider is whether you can use the calculator during the test. Please make sure to ask them before the test. If calculator is allowed, please make sure to refresh your knowledge on all the functions so you don't struggle during the test. And now let's continue and get you ready for the interview and assessment test. Not so long ago, Excel assessment test questions always had VLOOKUP functions in them. Since additional functionality was added into Microsoft Excel, now you are tested for your knowledge of index and match functions, 
which is a more sophisticated equivalent of VLOOKUP. For example, how to display the product ID for product name water cooler in cell E2. And you present it with the screen where you can see different product IDs, different product names and product prices. And you have product name of water cooler and then you have column F where the final value should be added. And you have four different choices. You have nested match inside match, you have nested index inside match, then you have nested index inside index function, and then you have nested match inside index function. So which one would you choose? Which one do you think is the right answer? And as you might have figured out by now, the correct answer is the match inside the index function. First, you need to identify where water cooler value is located in the range B2 to B7. And then you take this value and through the index function, you identify the product ID for that particular selection. So when we hit enter for this function, the final answer and final product ID will be three, which matches the water cooler. So the correct answer here is D, and you have match function inside of nested index function. And one of the big advantage of index and match pair functions is that the VLOOKUP value can be in any column of the array, unlike the VLOOKUP function in which lookup value must be in the first column. A lot of times you might be tested on your knowledge of Excel formatting features. This is one of the samples questions you might get. In the following worksheet, you want to copy the format of cell A2 into the cells C2 through F2. Which methods would you use to achieve this the most efficiently? In the four different choices presented here in the Excel screen, you can use Format Painter, choice A, you can use Insert, B, you can use Merge and Center, which is C, and then you can use cell styles, which is D. Which option would you choose? As you're probably well aware, to copy formatting in Microsoft Excel, you use Format Painter. For example, cell A1 has a lot of different formatting options. And to copy the format of cell A1 to the range of C2 through E2, this is what you need to do. You need to select the cell, click Format Painter, and then apply this to a range of C2 through E2. And as you probably figured out by now, the correct answer is A, Format Painter. And Format Painter is one of the most helpful and underused features of Microsoft Excel. It works by copying or formatting of one cell and applying it to other cells. And format attributes that being copied, we have different general percentage currency, all these numeric types of options that's available in Excel. Also, as part of formatting process, font characteristics are being copied, such as bold, italic, and underline, and others. You copy fill color, text alignments, cell borders, and a lot of other things. A lot of times during Excel assessment test, you will be tested on your knowledge of Excel keyboard shortcuts. In this particular question, you're being asked what is the keyboard shortcut of the auto sum in Excel, and you present it with the four different choices. So there are four different shortcuts. The first one is Alt equal, Alt S, Alt D, and then Alt A. What do you think is the right answer? One thing to keep in mind here is that there are only two keyboard keys that you need to press. For example, plus sign is not plus sign that you press on the keyboard. Plus sign just indicates that there are two keys, Alt and the, another key, for example, equal sign. Alt and another key, for example, capital S. So with that in mind, what do you think is the right answer? There are multiple ways to trigger auto sum function in Excel. For example, if you have a set of values, and typically it's a numerical values, like in the column B in this case, you can trigger auto sum function by just clicking on the auto sum, and you see that automatically on the home tab, auto sum in editing section, it shows you the shortcut. So for example, if you know where the sum function is, you can quickly find what the shortcut is. And in this case, the answer is Alt plus equal sign. And once you trigger this shortcut, it highlights the area, and once you click Enter, it inserts the sum of the values. To learn more about shortcuts used in Excel assessment test, I recommend my PDF ebook that you can download from my website. In this book, I have the whole section dedicated to keyboard shortcuts. You can see that the section here covers Excel shortcuts, frequently used shortcuts, formatting, function key shortcuts, navigational shortcuts, column and row shortcuts, and then control shortcuts. All of these shortcuts have been selected based on the questions we see on the tests. And in addition to shortcuts, you will also find top 50 Excel interview questions and Excel assessment test questions used during Excel assessment test to get you ready and get you hired uh, for your new employment. 
As you probably figured out by now, the correct answer to the question is A, alt plus equal sign. And once you press this shortcut after selecting all the values, you will get auto sum function triggered, and then you just need to hit enter to execute it. Very frequently, you are being tested on your knowledge of Excel formulas. And this is one of those questions, where you will be asked which formula is used to retrieve first three characters in a cell. And you're given four different choices, left, left char, get, and extract. So what does it mean, first three characters in a cell? It means that it's probably going to be on the left side. So for a sample of apple, you see on the column C, where the values are highlighted, first three characters would represent APP. For oranges, it would be ORA. So what do you think is the right choice here? As you're probably well aware, to get the first three characters on the left side, you would want to use the left formula. And when you type left and then in parentheses the cell value and then number of characters you'd like to retrieve on the left-hand side, it actually gets all these characters and puts them in a different cell. So for example, in this case, for Apple, we'll get first three characters, APP. And we can replicate this formula by dragging the sign here at the bottom uh, right corner, and then it will replicate the formula for oranges and cherries as well. So the correct answer here is A, which is the left A3, and then it shows the number of characters that you're trying to retrieve. Left char is not an existing function. Get and extract also are not an existing functions in Excel. And if you're trying to see if some particular function is an existing function, all you need to do is put the value into the cell and then type equal sign and then start typing and you see the only function that starts with left is the left function itself. So choice A is the correct answer. A lot of times when you work with the data from another source, you may need to separate the data into the separate columns. For example, here we see a combination of first and last name in column A, but in columns B and C, you see these values as separate values. So how would you do it? Which Excel function would you use? You're presented with the four different choices, text to column, separate, fu separate function, split function, and split to column. Which one would you choose? And the correct answer here is split to column. To access this functionality, you need to select the values and navigate to the data tab. Here you select text to column, and it offers you different choices. For example, it offers it uh, as a delimited text or fixed width. In our case, it's a delimited, and delimitation comes with the space sign that we use to separate the values. Instead of tab, we choose space, which is one of the values, and you see this is how uh, the separation and split will be performed. We click the next button, and here we can assign data types uh, to the data. If we don't do it, then Excel will assign general data type, and then we can click finish. And you see that it automatically replaced the values uh, with col in column A and column B, and now we have first and last name in the separate columns. So the correct answer is answer A, text to column function. This function is used to separate words that have a separator character, for example, space, special character, tab, or any unique word. Keep in mind that even though we call it function, it is not really a function, it's a functionality. And below are instructions on how to use it. Other choices here in the list, separate function, split function, or split to column, they do not exist in Excel. So you kind of have to know what you're dealing with, and that's what the purpose of this question, to test your knowledge on this particular functionality, and if you have used it as part of data conversion. Very often, you might be tested on your knowledge to manipulate Excel strings. This is a simple question in this category. Which formula is used to make first letter in the word uppercase? What we see here on the screen, in column A, all values are lowercase. In column B, the same values represented with only first character uppercase. And there are four choices presented. A, proper, first upper, left up, and uppercase. Which one would you choose? The correct answer here is to use proper function, and this is the syntax. All you need to do is type the function and reference the cell, in this case it's cell A3, which contains the original value. And you see that the value was converted with the first letter being uppercase and the remaining letters in the word being lowercase. If you need to expand this function, you can use copy and paste or just drag it to represent updated values in all the cells in column B. So the correct answer here is choice A proper and then you reference the original value from original cell. I'd like to ask you to participate in our daily Excel assessment test challenge. 
I post new questions every day in the community tab of this channel and give you an opportunity to answer this and try it. And I post the answer in the comments next day. So please make sure to check it out and test your knowledge. And now let's continue and get you ready for the test. Very often during Excel assessment test, you might be tested on how well you know Excel formatting. One of the questions we see on the screen is in a similar category. How to increase decimals of a value which has percentage sign. And there are choices presented for you in the explanation of what exactly you're looking for to accomplish. For example, you need to go from 76% to 76.25, from 70 after rounding 69.75, and etc. And there are four choices presented. So which one would you choose? You see the values in this example are replicated from cells I3 through I7. So how would you increase percentage sign? You actually use this button, which calls for increase decimal. And once you click it once, it increases decimal by one decimal point. If you click it twice, it adds two decimal points, which exactly mimics the answer. Or instead of selecting one at a time, you can select all of the values and then click it twice to increase decimal points. So the correct answer here is B, which is increase decimal point. And once you see the answer, you need to click increase decimal point value twice after you selected all the range of values to increase decimal points. Very often, as part of Excel assessment test, you are tested on your knowledge of key features and functionality. Let's look at the one of the questions you might get. You use, and then you need to fill in the blank, to automate data analysis and organize the answers returned by Excel. And you have four choices. Extract data range, extract, formula, and data table. Which one would you choose? Which one do you think is the right answer? As you might have figured, the correct answer to this question is D, data table. Data table can be created from either existing data set or by importing the new data right into Excel table. Despite availability of a lot of different languages and tools specifically designed for data analysis, Excel still remains the key in the data analysis for the small data sets, and Excel table is essential part of it. Hopefully you've got the answer to this question correctly. Let's look at the typical Excel assessment test that tests your knowledge of Excel security. You can add and then you need to fill in the blank and select the choice when you want to keep others from changing your worksheet. There are four choices, data range encryption, password protection, protected file attribute, and then trust center option. Which one would you choose? Which one do you think is the right answer? To limit what others can do with your worksheet, you need to password protect the worksheet. To do that, you navigate to review tab and then select protect sheet option. There are different security options that you can choose when protecting your worksheet, allowing users to do specific functions and disabling them from doing others. You need to select the right options that you would like to allow for editing and then enter the password twice to confirm the selection. So the correct choice here is choice B. You can password protect Microsoft Excel file to prevent unauthorized people from opening or editing them. You still will be able to open or edit it if you know the password. All other choices in this question are designed to trick you. Hopefully you've got it right. Why you might consider subscribing to this channel? This is one of the fastest way to learn and get prepared for Excel assessment test. Skills you learn are helpful today and in the future. You get answers to your questions. You have opportunity to help other people. And you have experienced professionals who already subscribed to this channel and ready to help you with any answers that you need. And now let's continue and get you ready for the test. Here is another question you might get as part of Excel assessment test. A, and then you need to fill in the blank function, can be used to calculate the sum of subset of data. And there are four choices, count, total, subtotal, and group. Which one do you think is the right answer? Subtotal function in Excel has a different way of organizing and calculating the values. For example, in this particular case, you have a choice of doing something within the range of C7 to C9. And 9 value represents specific action that you take in within this range. There are 11 different subfunctions subtotal currently supports. And value 9 represents the sum, which is what we're looking for. So when we will insert the subtotal function in the cell D10, it will calculate subtotal for the range of D7 through D9, and it would be a sum of values 
based on the number 9, which represents the sum. As you might have figured out by now, the correct answer to this question is C, subtotal, because subtotal allows you to group and summarize your data using sum, count, average, minimum, max, and other functions. And in this case, we're looking for the sum function. Hopefully you've got it right. Here is the typical questions that aims to test your knowledge of Microsoft Excel security. You can change the value, and then you need to fill in the blank, of cells at any time. And there are four choices. Unprotected, formatted, unlocked, and hidden. Which one would you choose? Which one do you think is the right answer? In Microsoft Excel, you have different option of changing the security of the cell by navigating to Format Cells option. One of the ways to navigate is by using the right mouse click. When you click on the menu, you see different options, and one of them is Protection tab. You can have cell being locked or hidden, but these options do not take any effect unless you actually protect the Excel spreadsheet using the Protect Sheet button. To Protect Sheet, you navigate to the Review tab and click on the Protect Sheet, where you select a lot of different options. So to answer the question, the cells that you can edit at any point of time are called unprotected. As you might have figured by now, the correct choice is choice A, which is unprotected, because protecting the cells that contain formula prevents them from being changed and can help you avoid future errors. And as we discussed, locking the cell is the first step, and you must perform additional operations to protect the workbook, such as setting the password. All choices besides choice A are incorrect and designed to trick you. Hopefully you've got it right. Let's take a look at the question, which tests your knowledge of Microsoft Excel tables. The query technique that uses the column heading arrows is called, and then you need to fill in the blank. It is automatically enabled when you first create Excel table. And there are four choices. Extract range, auto filter, sorting, and then rules manager. Which one would you choose? To convert data into Excel table, you need to select the range you're trying to convert, and then you have multiple choices. One of them is click on the insert and then click table, or as you can see, there's a shortcut, control T, which will do the same thing. If you click on the table, it prompts you to confirm the range that you're trying to convert, and you need to check the box my table has headers, which in our case it does. When you click OK, you see that Excel table was created, and by default, you have auto filter option. This is the same option that's available if you add auto filter to a range. You have a lot of different choices in this auto filtering option. You can sort, sort by color, and you can select specific values if you would like to manually handpick the selection. So as you might have figured out by now, the correct answer to this question is auto filter, which is the choice B. Because you can use the auto filter feature to find show or hide values in one or more columns of data. And it's automatically added every time you create Excel tables. Hopefully you've got it right. Can I ask you to do me a favor? If you know someone who is getting ready for interview or Excel assessment test, please share this video with them. This is going to help them pass and get their dream job. I really appreciate it. Thank you. And now let's continue and get you ready for the test. Here is the question that tests your knowledge of Microsoft Excel tools and functionalities. Which tool can combine last names, initials, and first names in column D if a worksheet column A contains employee last name, column B contains employee's middle name, and then column C contains employee's first names? And you have four choices, columns to text, concatenation, autofill, and flash fill. Which one would you choose? To combine the value from multiple columns into one cell, you need to use Excel feature called concatenation. There is a concatenate function, and if you concatenate values from A3, B3, and C3, it combines the result. Now you can just expand this formula into other cells, and it will replicate and will come up with the full name value. Because of this, the correct answer to this question is B, concatenation. Concatenation in Microsoft Excel is the process of joining two or more values together, and this method is often used to combine a few pieces of text that resides in a different cells. Technically, these are called text strings or simply a strings. And when you concatenate cells in Excel, you combine only the context of those cells. Here is the question that tests your knowledge of Excel's features and functionality. 
when cell A1 value is 7, its background displays a green color. Changing the value to 8 changes the background color to blue. What type of formatting applied to the cell A1? And there are four choices. Tabular formatting, cell style formatting, conditional formatting, and value formatting. What do you think is the right choice? Which one would you choose? This is how this functionality looks in Excel. If you change the value of the cell from 7 to 8, you see that the background color changes as well. And this functionality is called conditional formatting. There are different rules that you can apply as part of conditional formatting. You can highlight cell based on specific rules of greater, less than, between, equal to, and uh, there are a lot of other conditions here as well. And then you can do a bottom top rules. You can have data bars, color scales, icon sets, and create your own rules in Microsoft Excel. As you might have figured out by now, the correct answer is C, which is conditional format, because it allows you to automatically apply formatting, such as colors, icons, and data bars, to one or more cells based on the cell value. And if value is changing, the application of conditional formatting changes as well. Can I ask you to do me a favor? If you like the content, please give this video a big thumbs up to tell us that you need more content like this. And now let's continue and get you ready for the test. Let's look at the question that tests your knowledge of formatting in Microsoft Excel, which you might get as part of Excel interview and assessment test. If column C is displaying a hash because the column is too narrow, how can we fix column C to display the entire set of data? Then you see an image where in column C you have a lot of hashtags. And there are four choices offered. A, double-click column C, B, right-click column C, select format cell, and then select best fit. Choice C, double-click the vertical boundary between columns C and D, and then choice D, right-click column C and select best fit. Which one would you choose? Pound sign in a column is an indication that data does not fit properly. And the best way to fix it is to click on the line that separates the column. Once you double-click, it expands the column to the appropriate size, where you can see all the data. And as you have figured out by now, the correct answer to this is choice C. Double-click the vertical boundary between column C and D. What's interesting is that the hashtag error, or a string of hash or pound signs, is not technically an error, but it looks very much the same. This is just an indication that the column width is too narrow to display the value as it's currently being formatted. One of the ways to fix it is to drag the column separator in between the columns. But because this choice wasn't available, the easiest way to do it is also by double-clicking it. Very frequently, you might be asked how to solve specific problem during Excel assessment test. For example, in this question, you will be asked how to calculate total units sold by JSON. And you present it with the table down below, which shows months, salesperson, and number of units sold information. One of the salespeople here is Jason, uh, but there are also other salespeople. And the question is, what would you use? How can you find out total numbers of units sold for Jason? And the presented choices is multi-sum, sum if function, if sum function, or sum formula. Which one would you use? Typically in Excel, when you have no conditions, you can just use sum function and calculate total of sum of values. In our case, we do have one condition, as we need to calculate units sold for JSON. And for that, we would need to use sum if function. This is how sum if function will look like to calculate the required values. We have a range of B2 through B11, which is the names of salespeople, and we are finding a values for JSON, which is the value of A15. And then we're getting the sum of values in the column C with the range of values C2 through C12. So when we hit enter to complete the calculation, uh, for JSON, 361 units have been sold. So the correct value for this question is value B, sum if function, because sum if function used to calculate sum of values when you need to calculate sum with one criteria condition. And this is the syntax of the formula that you can use. Can I ask you to do me a favor? If you like the content, please give this video a big thumbs up to tell us that you need more content like this. Now let's continue and help you to get ready for Excel interview and assessment test. 
Very often, you might be asked the question on how to perform specific function in Excel. For example, in this question, which formula you would use to remove a percentage sign and convert it into space. In, in the example given, you see that in column A, there are values that have percentage sign in between the words. And in column B, the values already replaced percentage sign with the space sign. And the choices presented are replace, remove, find and replace function, and substitute function. So which one would you choose? The correct answer is to use substitute function. And the syntax would be substitute, then you reference the uh, cell A1, and then you're saying that you're substituting percentage sign with the space. The easiest way to replicate the values from uh, cell B2 would be to drag the values down, or you can also use copy uh, by clicking the copy button, then selecting the area for which you would like to replicate the value, and clicking paste button. So the correct answer here is D, substitute function, because this function replaces any unwanted word with the word that you want. The tricky part of this question is that there is a also option that looks very, very valid. For example, find and replace function. But find and replace is the functionality in Excel. There is no such function as find and replace. So you need to be careful and read the entire answer and make sure you're not making the mistake. The only function that exists is substitute that can make this uh, substitution of percentage sign with the space. A lot of people ask, how can I help on this channel? One of the best ways to help is to help other people answer the questions that they're getting. If you know the answer to the question that you see in comments, please post the answer in the comment section of this video. And now let's continue and get you ready for the test. Let's look at the question, how to highlight duplicate values by using conditional formatting. What you see on the screen here is the set of values in two columns, fruit ID and then fruit name. And uh, you see in green some of the values that are duplicates. Um, you see grapes that are duplicates, you see lynchy, you, had, you see date palm as a duplicate, and you need to highlight all of the values. And there are four possible choices. And you have all the choices pretty much the same, but the last part of the selection is different. You have identified duplicates, you have highlight duplicates, matching values, and then you have duplicate values. Seems like a technicality, but these are the types of questions that you get on the test. So what do you think is the right answer? To identify duplicates in Excel, you need to highlight all the values, and then click Conditional Formatting, Highlight Cell Rules, and then click on the duplicate values. And then here, in this dialog box, you're presented with the choices that you're selecting the duplicates. And this is the color that you choose to highlight the duplicates. For example, to replicate the question that was on the test, you need to select green field with dark green text. Click OK. And you see that all the duplicates have been highlighted. So the correct answer here is D. First, you need to select and then go to conditional formatting from the Home tab, and then highlight cell rules and click duplicate values and choose your color. Keep in mind, that though choices A through C are very similar looking, but they're not the same. And those technicalities are something that you'll be tested on Excel assessment test. Let's look at the question, which Excel date format would you use to display date January 1st, 2020 as January-20? There are four choices presented. Month-YY, MMMM-YY, 3Ms and dash YY, and then month-shortyear. To answer this question correctly, it requires your knowledge of custom Excel date formats. Custom formats located under the Home tab in the Number section. If you click Number in this expansion button here on the Number section, you see different choices. This is not a default format of what we are looking to change it to. As if you scroll down, you do not see it on the list. To create this format, we need to go to the custom format sections and look at the possible options. Obviously, if you have access to Excel during the test, you can just go and try any one of these formats. But there is a logic to the custom date formats in Excel. For example, you do not see the full words like month or year or short year here on the list. You only see specific letters representing the months. For example, if we pick three M's dash YY, it will present months as the three-letter months, in our case, January-20, J-A-N-20. Let me show you one cool trick right here in the Format Cells dialog box. You do not even have to leave the dialog box to see how the final format date is going to look like. When I choose the different custom format, or if I type the format, it shows it right in the sample sections. 
you see as I'm switching in between sections, it changes how a sample is going to look like. And you can try an experiment, for example, by adding number of letters M in your custom format. So the correct answer to this question is 4Ms-YY. All other choices are designed to trick you. If we go back to the question, the correct answer is B, 4Ms-YY. All other choices are designed to trick you, to believe that you might be looking at the right answer, but they are not valid options in Excel or incorrect for the particular question. A lot of you are interested in asking me, how can I help others? One of the ways you can help other people is by sharing the latest questions that you see on Excel interview and assessment test and how you answer them. Please share the questions you recently encountered in the comments section of this video. If you know the answers, please share them as well. And now let's continue and get you ready for the test. Let's look at the question, which function can be used to remove unwanted space from a cell? And what you see here on the list, you see a column A populated with values, and some of these values have multiple spaces. For example, in between words, uh, there's a series of spaces. And four choices are presented. And you see the text here is uh, not in English. Some of the words are in English. So you have to pick the function that would be working not just in English, but in any other language. And four choices are presented. We have a choice of remove space, clear function, trim function, delete char function. So what do you think is the right answer? And the correct answer is a trim function. When you start typing in column B and you type trim, you see this uh, help here that comes from Excel. It removes all spaces from a text string except for a single spaces between words. What you need to do, you need to type the trim function and then in parentheses put the cell A2, which would uh, reference the cell in the column A, and then hit enter. And you see that it removed all extra spaces. And then what you need to do, you need to just drag it across the area using the drag button, which was available right here in the bottom left corner and then you see that all extra spaces have been removed. Other choices presented in the test are not valid choices. For example, if you start typing remove or you need to type clear or any other choices that's presented in the quiz, you will not find those types of functions in Excel. So this particular question relies on your knowledge and understanding that trim function is available and this is what it's used for. If you have a choice of uh, working and accessing Excel document during the test, you can quickly run a test and eliminate choices A, B, and D from the list because they are not valid choices and these functions don't exist in Excel. And by now you probably figured out that the correct answer is C, which is a trim function, which is used to remove unwanted spaces and I showed you the format of how to use this function. And now let's take actual LinkedIn Excel assessment test to see how many questions can we answer correctly. Let's go ahead and start with the question one. Some of the data in the column C is displaying a hashtag because the column is too narrow. How can you widen column C just enough to show the data? There are four choices presented. You just need to pick one out of four. One thing I would like to mention is that LinkedIn doesn't give you feedback when you submit your results. So my LinkedIn uh, Excel assessment choices might be incorrect. If you see something that may not be correct, please post your feedback and comments in the comment section of this video. I really appreciate it. So before we progress, let me show you a couple important things here. There is a timer uh, on the screen in the bottom left corner of the screen itself, and it shows question one out of 15. So that's uh, how you know where you are in the quiz. It also shows the progress bar, um, which allows you to determine where you are uh, right here. Uh, so there is a question, uh, and there are typically four different answers, and you just need to select typically multiple choice, which means that you only have one answer to the question. The right answer here is double click the vertical boundary between columns C and D. Uh, that helps to expand the column. If you look on the screen, this is a scenario described in the test. There is a set of uh, pound uh, symbols, which basically hides the numbers because column is too narrow to fit the numbers. And to expand it, you can drag it, but this wasn't one of the choices, or you can just double click on the line, uh, and then it expands it and shows all the numbers. Next question, which of two functions check for the presence of numerical and uh, non-numerical characters in cell? If you don't know the answer to this question, you can navigate to Excel and basically try these functions to see if they're valid. For example, is number is a valid function, right? And you see that it uh, shows whether it's a valid number or not. Um, or 
same thing you can do is text is also a valid function and it checks whether a value is a text returns true or false. Um, let's uh, try is alpha. Is alpha is not a valid function. Is value also not a valid? The right answer here, if you, even if you didn't know, you can still fit it within this uh, one minute and 20 seconds. Just open up Excel and find out that the A is the right choice for you. And the answer here is is number and is text. Now let's go to question three. If you drag the fill handle lower right corner of the cell A2 downward into cells A3, A4, and A5, what contents will appear in those cells? The tricky part about this question is that by default, Excel assigns general data type, not the text data type. And if we drag it into three cells, it will add February, March, and April. And that would be the right answer. So the question is, if A3 contains the text, the death of uh, chivalry, um, what is the function equals proper uh, in parentheses A3 return? So proper means that the first letter would be uppercase, uh, and then the rest of the letters in the word would be lowercase. If you don't know the answer, you can open up Excel and quickly replicate this scenario. You just need to type in the death of chivalry uh, right here in Excel in the cell A3, and then uh, uh, you have access to proper function by typing equals proper and then in parentheses you say a3 and then hit the answer and uh, you will see that the right answer is uh, answer d on the test so the closest match here would be this because here the off is the lowercase and it should be off uppercase now let's look at question five in the worksheet below you want to use data subtotal to show a subtotal value per sport what must you do before applying the subtotal function? And the key here in this question is before. You see it's capitalized. So it's important to look at those types of things because LinkedIn is trying to help you out with the possible answer here. There are four different answers uh, offered. Sort by data in column E, format the data in column D, sort by data in column D, and format the data in column E. The right answer is that you need to sort values um, by column D. Uh, and the reason you need to do it, let's uh, kind of run the scenario that you don't do anything. So you select the values, navigate to the data tab and click subtotal. You select both uh, sports and sales and click OK. And uh, what it does is it groups by values, but because um, the take one dough is not uh, succeeded by another take one dough, but succeeded by archery in this case, then it created a group for take one dough total, and then archery total, and then another take one dough total, another archery total, which isn't correct. That's not what we want uh, based on the condition of this exercise. So we're going to undo this uh, uh, step, and then to sort it uh, by values in column D, we need to uh, select the column, go to Home tab, and click um, Sort and Filter. We can uh, select Apply Quick Filter, and then here, We'll just sort A to Z, and you see archery, then frisbee, and then taekwondo. Uh, so now let's do the same thing as we did in the beginning. Select the values, uh, highlight them, and click subtotal. And then we will have both sports and sales, and click sports and sales. And then you will see that it applied subtotal for archery, which calculated correctly. Uh, subtotal for taekwondo, which is also calculated correctly. So the right answer to select would be uh, sort by data in column D. Now let's go to the next question, question six. When editing a cell, what do you press to cycle between relative, mix, and absolute cell reference? The right shortcut is F4. For example, if you've entered the formula with F2 to F8 range, and then you just use F4 to cycle, you see that uh, it switches between uh, relative, mixed, and absolute cell references. If you'd like to learn more about shortcuts, uh, there is an entire section in my ebook, Top 50 Excel Interview and Assessment Test Questions, which covers uh, various different shortcuts used in Excel assessment tests. And you can find the link to the ebook in the description of this video. And now let's look at the question seven. You need to add a line chart showing a sales trend over the last 12 months, and you have only a little space to work with. How can you convey the required information within a single cell? There are multiple answers here, and a lot of them seem like a right choice. 
For example, add an image of the chart to a comment, add a hyperlink to another worksheet that displays the chart when clicked, add an image of the chart to the worksheet, or add a spark line, a graphic that summarizes data visually within a single worksheet cell. So which one would you choose? And the right answer here is to select the spark line. So Sparkline allows you to put a lot of graphical information, a chart, into one cell. So this is how you do it. For example, look at this graph. It shows sales for a period of uh, January 2020 to December 2020 uh, for different states. So let's pick uh, Alabama. Uh, let's select Alabama and let's say that we want to put the sales as a Sparkline graph into one cell. To do that, you just search for Sparkline option. And you see that actions would be a uh, line spark line, which will bring up a dialog box. We already selected the data range here. We just need to identify location range where it's all going to be located. And we're putting it into just one cell. And when you click OK, you see that the spark line was created. So the right answer here in this question is the spark line. Let's look at the question eight. What is the best way to activate the Excel help system? So there are multiple choices here, and you probably know if you're Windows users that for uh, any Windows application, F1 is the right option. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time here, but uh, the right choice would be B or number two, whatever you choose in your notation. Uh, but uh, make sure to press F1 or click the Help tab in the ribbon. So that's how you activate uh, any, any Windows application's help system, and specifically Excel. Hope you are enjoying the content and learning how to answer questions. Make sure to subscribe to this channel, click the like button, share with your friends or anybody you're trying to help with this uh, Excel assessment test questions. And we're going to go to question 9. Which format will display the value of 27,500 uh, as 27.5? So there are four formats displayed here. Keep in mind that pound sign, it's a digit placeholder that represents optional digits and does not display extra zeros. So that's an important consideration here. Um, and the zero itself is the digit placeholder that displays an insignificant zeros. So if you just go through the method of exclusion, you will come to the choice B, which would represent because pounds, uh, as I mentioned, does not uh, show the extra zeros. And uh, there are not a lot of other choices. This is invalid choice. This wouldn't work and uh, one wouldn't work. So the right choice is B uh, and we're going to select it and move to the next question. Let's look at the question 10. When using goal sick, you can find a target result by varying something that would be your answer at most. So, and the choices are three inputs, four inputs, two inputs, and one input. You can navigate to the goal seek as part of what's if analysis, which is located in the data tab. So you go to the data tab and here what's if analysis. And goal seek is choice number two. So you click goal seek and you see that there are three parameters that goal seek accepts set cell, two value, and by changing cell. So the right answer is three parameters, which would be choice number one. Now let's go to question 11. In the image below, which option can you select so that appropriate field header appears in cell A4 and B3 instead of the terms row label and column labels, respectively? And the answers are show in the tabular form, show in the compact form, show in the compact form or show in outline form, or show in tabular form or show in outline form. I'm not going to give you the right answer here, but instead I'm going to ask you to comment in the comment section of this video and we will share the comments and thoughts and how to answer this question correctly right in the comment section of this video. And I'm going to move to the next question. In question 12, you have a cell containing the value of 7.877 and you want to display it as 7.9. How can you accomplish this? If you look closely at the answers, you see that there are two choices that are very similar. Decrease decimal button twice and decrease decimal button once. So you have to pay attention and understand the differences. Here's the decimal buttons, increase decimal button and decrease decimal button right in the home tab in the number section. So you select the value and you click decimal button twice and you get to the value of 7.9. What's interesting here in this question is that another choice of round function is also could be used. So if you type, for example, round B1 and then round it down to just one digit, you will also get 7.9. So I'm not sure how this particular test works, but it's probably either if you select the first choice or the second choice, you will hit the right answer. Let's look at the question 13. Which formula is not an equivalent to all of the others? The tricky part about this question is that bottom three answers stand out. They all use some formula. And you might be confused that question that answer one stands out 
and really the answer to this question. But this is misleading because this should be about the result and not the format of the answers. For example, the result of a3 plus a4 plus a5 plus a6 would be equal sum of a3 through a6 and also would be equal sum of a3 through a6 but would be substantially difference of sum of a3 and a6. So the right answer here is this choice, which is sum a3 comma a6, which is substantially different and not equivalent to all the others. Now let's look at the question 14. Which of the custom format will make the cell in column A appear like a corresponding cell in column B? And there are multiple different choices here. So the right choice here is choice two. And the last question is which function returns a reference to a cell or cell range, which is important, that is specified distance from a base cell. Four different formulas are offered here, all valid formulas, offset, VLOOKUP, index, and match. Please, I'm not gonna give you the answers uh, here, uh, but I'd like you to do research if you don't know the answers and post your comments uh, with the answers right in the comment section of this video. I have passed the test, which is very exciting. I am going to proudly display the badge on my LinkedIn profile. Thanks for watching. I encourage you to check out our daily question challenge in the community section of this channel. I also recommend that you check downloads in the description section of this video. Please also check out resources page on our website, howtoanalyzedata.net slash resources. If you like the content, please give this video a big thumbs up. This tells us that you need more content like this. I would encourage you to share this video with other people that might be looking for the job. This will help them to get prepared and pass assessment test faster. Please consider subscribing and following this channel. We have community of great people helping each other to get ready and pass the test. Please leave questions, comments, or suggestions in the comment section of this video. And all the best on your interview and assessment test. Thanks for watching.